to the people that aren't living in New Hampshire that are libertarians, you really can't capture or calculate how valuable it is to have that community. My name is Matthias von Gutenberg, and I moved to the Free State Project in 2013. Well, I chose the Free State Project because it seemed to be the best reason um, to pick New Hampshire. I had a lot of other reasons to pick New Hampshire. Um, the economy, the climate, the type of people, um, getting away from Florida. I have been taken to writing, writing about various kinds of um, subjects that I feel that are unfortunately underground and that deserve to have some sunlight given to them. I think that the transition we're looking to achieve begins on the individual level. I think we change hearts and minds one by one. Uh, and so I like to focus my efforts on a more social perspective. I like to change the culture. I like to interact with people on an individual level. And I like to spread what I think are the most powerful tools for our own freedom. And that is uh, using things like Bitcoin, using things like Tech Secure, using various cryptographic tools that are kind of in the, in the kind of the crypto anarchist toolbox. I think we've got a lot of tools that just don't get used a lot very often. So I like to popularize those and I like to convince or persuade people to use them. And I feel like we can carve out kind of a sphere of freedom from those. In my younger years, the first writing that I ever did, um, I used to write for a personal blog with my friend uh, John Catalan. We wrote on economicthought.net and you can find a lot of my early economics and social writing on there. I used to write for Mises Institute. And then most recently I've been writing for Bitcoin Magazine and I've been trying to um, steer the conversation in a certain way that is uh, itself easy to digest, but also radical, also in a way that carries people further than the distance they think they're going to go. Everyone can identify with getting pulled over by cops. Everyone can identify with driving down the road, you're going home, or you're going out, or whatever, and you see lights behind you in your rear view, and the first feeling that you experience is not, oh, thank God I'm protected, I'm being served right now, these watchdogs are behind me, wonderful, I can, I'm for sure gonna be safe. It's usually fear. It's usually fear, paranoia. It's, it's, in my opinion, it's your instinct telling you that there's predators that are behind you and your instincts trying to tell you something and then years and decades of conditioning are kind of swamping that and be like, well, the police are here to protect us and we're going to be safe with it. But I think that everyone can naturally and immediately identify with um, wanting to hold police accountable, for instance. So I support the, the movements of cop lock. I support, I support filming police. I think cop lock in New Hampshire has been wildly successful. I think one out of three people that we bump into on the streets while doing this type of work are very positive, are very supportive. The other two thirds are usually non-committal or non-descript. They usually don't know or don't care or don't have an interest. Very rarely do we get people that are overly hostile to what we're doing. And the same thing with Bitcoin. With Bitcoin, it's a little bit different because Bitcoin is still so abstract. It's still so out into the ether of the, the digital currency that's decentralized and distributed and peer-to-peer. -peer. And what does that mean? And oh, how can I visualize that? So I try to bring Bitcoin to a human level, like I show them like here, I can send money across the planet at about two and a half cents and it gets there and it's confirmed in about 10 minutes. And you can't do that with any other technology on the planet. Not with all of Visa's worldwide global networks, not with all of the SWIFT and ACH networks the banks use to send money, whatever, that will cost you hundreds of dollars. And I like to use Bitcoin to show people that I can be my own bank that I don't have to use their money. To the people that aren't living in New Hampshire that are libertarians, I would say that you really can't, um, you really can't capture or calculate how valuable it is to have that community. I know plenty of people that are in New Mexico, that are in Washington, that are all across the world, or across the country, or across the world, that have these ideas and they're surrounded day in and day out by muggles. And I think that that's difficult for a lot of people because there's a lot of frustration. They can't be themselves. They have to, they have to permanently be Clark Kent's. And here, there's a whole community of people being, being Superman. Getting to be here, to live here, I can't overstate how important that is to my own satisfaction and the satisfaction of so many people around me because I see that they get to be themselves. There's a kind of existential satisfaction 
that you acquire from just being free to be yourself that isn't available to you when you're living with other people that don't share those ideas, with other muggles and other zombies and other people that have various distorted political ideas where they feel that it's perfectly justified to initiate force on people because of my own idiosyncratic cultural preferences. I think we should totally arrest people for these or that various arbitrary reasons. Getting away from that and being part of a community that recognizes that peace, freedom, and the non-initiation of force are absolutely paramount virtues, it's an amazing feeling. Most of my writings on these topics can be found at the places that I've written. So Bitcoin Magazine, uh, the Mises Institute, Economic Thought, these are kind of repositories of some of my ideas. Now, some of those predate Bitcoin, and so you won't find those ideas there. You should Google me. You put my name into Google, and I promise the first thing that comes up is either going to be my most hotly read article from Bitcoin Magazine, which is probably has to do with crypto anarchy, various types, uh, or it'll be my Facebook page, or it'll be an immediate way that you can digest me and you can access me. Hey y'all, it's Cecilia with Shire Dude from It's Like This Too. We plan on doing an Ask Me Anything. So if you have a question about the Free State Project, what life is like here in New Hampshire, or, or pretty much anything, then put your question in the comments down below. Or you can tweet us at FairlyCC at Real Shire Dude. And we'll do a little segment where we uh, put them all in a bowl and answer them. Thanks for watching the show, guys. Make sure to like us on Facebook, because it's like this too. <laughs>